um, there's kind of a definite price, a definite zone where people buy and sell coins at, and that's what the dealer should stick to if they want to sell anything to a collector. Well, I think they're dead wrong. We're having a great time here. This is the Texas Numismatic Association. Nothing better than interviewing the young Turks of the business to get them involved and more involved in coin collecting, especially dealing. We need it. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the role reversal of pricing coins um, and how that has to do with auction records. We hope you guys enjoy today's episode. A big negotiating tool when trying to get coins as a collector or as a dealer or um, when you're trying to sell them is PCGS price guide because they have a lot of auction records when you go to sell or go to buy. And that's kind of what we use um, as well as Graysheet when uh, working with coins. And uh, people think that auction records have to help the collector more than they have to help the dealer because um, there's kind of a definite price, a definite zone where people buy and sell coins at. And that's what the dealer should stick to if they want to sell anything to a collector. Well, I think they're dead wrong. And the reason why is because I'm going to talk about two different pricing strategies, two different things that make the sale of the coin in an auction different than the sale of a coin um, from a dealer. And so it's, a, it's an interesting phenomenon. I hope you guys uh, comment your thoughts down below of my opinion of this and is it correct in your eyes. So the first type of pricing I want to talk about is point in time pricing. And what point in time pricing is, is that um, a coin during a certain period was up for auction for a week or three days or for two weeks and it ended at a certain particular time and it's a point in time pricing because like I said it's only a specific period of time where it was available for you to bid on and for you to win. There's another term of pricing which is readily available pricing so the reason why these two are different is because someone's going to pull up auction records and say well, this coin or this particular type of coin with this grade sold at auction for this much um, at, at a certain month in a certain year, and you want this much over that coin, right? So there's a point in time pricing and there's a readily available pricing. And I think that dealers ultimately have the upper hand because they have the coin that you want. They have the coin that you desire for your collection and you can buy it from them whenever you want to. You can walk the, the show the whole weekend you can uh, you know, reach out to them afterwards if they still have it. Um, the coin is available for you anytime that you want it. But for point in time pricing, people say, oh, auction records are the things we should look at. And that's partially true. But like I said, go find another one. Go find another one that's going up for auction right now. Um, will it even be able to be attained for the price that you want it? And um, a, lot of these, a lot of these auctions as well sometimes for tougher coins are spaced out amongst years. So um, readily available pricing is gonna be much higher for, for many coins rather than point in time pricing. And the readily available pricing for me, um, it, like say I was to price a coin $20 or $30 more than what they were selling for at auction on my website, I could go on any, I can go on eBay, Etsy or anything else and they would have it for $100, $150 over um, the, the current auction kind of records. And so uh, there is competition with readily available pricing because if you were to look at the market right now and there was none up for auction, you would be the lowest price even though it was above the, the highest kind of auction record. And the, at the end of the day, you have to understand that many people want the coin. So if you buy a coin that's highly, highly desirable, even if you have uh, you know readily available purchasing or, or pricing, um, those people, will pick it up because they don't want to wait for an auction and they don't want to spend 15 days doing so and then bid at the right time and hopefully get it for the right amount and hopefully buyer's premium doesn't hurt them. And so those two kind of pricing strategies or pricing things that you have to understand really comes into the combination of how to price coins, how to understand them. And we're going to use a specific example here in just a moment. So the example that we want to use today is this 1872 CC seated half dollar, which is graded G6 by NGC. You're gonna see the image right here. We ended up buying this from Black Eagle Coins on Instagram. So if you guys wanna check him out, make sure to follow him because 
He sells some nice coins now and again, but I bought this coin for $390 shipped. And $390 shipped is like $18 below the most recent auction comp. And so, um, you know, there, many people would ask, Drew, are you only gonna make 18 bucks? Are you not gonna make very much money on this coin? And my answer to them would be, no, I'm gonna make around 10% on this coin because I feel it's, uh, it's not a point in time pricing, but it's a readily available pricing. So I'm gonna have the coin priced at probably 20 or $30 more than 408, which is the most recent auction comp, because it's gonna be available for people to look at, available for people to purchase. They don't have to wait for a certain period of time for an auction to run and them to get it. People wanna save time, and sometimes that includes spending extra money on a coin. And so it's, um, it's a little bit easier for, like I said, for dealers to price coins right now because of such of the market that we're in, it's kind of hot still. And um, people just wanna buy coins. People are interested in moving the money that we see right now, which is basically being printed and given away like it's candy. And they wanna move it into coins. They wanna move it into assets. And so when you have a lot of coins that are nice, and you have them on your website or in your shop and they're they are readily available pricing for your collectors people are going to want to spend that money because they're not going to know where to find it anywhere else unless they wait for that point in time pricing so i hope you guys understand the difference between the two um, i wanted to talk a little bit about it because it was kind of interesting to me who really has the upper hand when we're talking about auction records with coins but if you guys are enjoying this video so far make sure to leave a like comment your thoughts like i said about everything that i've talking about do you kind of agree with that do you see with uh, you know dealers kind of pricing it above auction sometimes um, and subscribe if you're new we're gonna show you guys um, a really cool interview that we have with one of our one of the greats of the coin collecting and coin dealing space David Lasso we actually spoke to him at TNA he's a really nice guy and I've always wanted to kind of be on one of his videos and we ended up recording that for you guys so you guys can listen to it beforehand so we hope you guys enjoy this interview, and we will see you guys in the next video. It's for them, it's for them, it's not, it's not, you know, so. 
time here. This is the Texas Numismatic Association. Nothing better than interviewing the young Turks of the business to get them involved and more involved in the point of life. Especially dealing. We need it. have coins for sale if you have coins for sale and you want to reach out to us my phone number is 832-538-4122 it'd be easier if you just texted me the photos and what you you know what you had in mind um, I could also send you a quote as well um, if you guys want to buy coins you know something for your collection that you would really enjoy acousticcollectibles.com we have a lot that we're trying to plan to get this weekend so um, go check it out we hope you guys enjoy that the coin shows that we'll be at in the next few months are down in the description below. Make sure to listen to the Freedom Coin Show podcast because we get to talk a little bit more to you guys about what's been going on with us and sometimes get a little controversial. So we hope you enjoy that.